welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to part two of the Bad Rap series. In part one, we covered the signs. I'm pretty sure I took you through the different astrological signs and I explained who I think is getting a bit of a bad rap unfairly. Uh, and interestingly, you know, in that video, we discovered that the signs that have very strong leadership potential are the ones that people tend not to like very much. And then again, of course, we've got Scorpio, 8th house, anything in that area is getting quite a bad rap. And do you know, on that quickly, I was just thinking about that before um, getting ready for this video. And I was thinking how if we took the 8th house out of the zodiac and Scorpio, let's say, for example, you know, and, and if you take those out and, and extract that area from life, how, how boring life would be. You think if you could take the eighth house out of all films and plays and art and everything, all that art would become very dull and boring. There'd be no drama, there'd be no depth, you know. So that leads us into this topic that I want to talk about today, which is debilitation. Now, what's the deal with debilitation? Why does that have a bad reputation? I think it has a bad reputation. And well, on that, on that point of thinking, you know, could we take the eighth house out and, and imagine what would happen to our art? It would, you know, lose something very vital. Um, a lot of people, they'll look at their chart and they'll say, oh, if only my Mars wasn't debilitated. If only I could just move it up here. Or they'll say, you know, um, they'll see something that they perceive as a problem and they'll think, oh, if only I could just tinker with it and put it there. And if only I could do this and if only I could do that. And that's actually not the point of uh, why we come here. It's Let's take a look. All right, so I've got, I've got an analogy, okay? And I'm, I'm warming into this topic. It might take me a bit of time. And I don't know, I was planning to talk about maybe a little bit about each planet and say what I see when they're debilitated or, or some of the hallmark things. If we have time for that, I'll include that in this video. But if this video gets a bit long, I might save that for another video. So let's see where we go. I'm just doing this off the cuff as I do, as I like to do. The idea came in this morning. I was having my shower, I get my best ideas in the shower, always happens, because I was thinking about Stevie Wonder, and I was thinking about Stevie Wonder um, over the last few days, actually, in relation to debilitation, and you're going to see why, because I'm going to draw out an analogy of how to look at debilitation in a chart, okay? So today's video is is giving a new angle, is giving a, a, a new look at an old topic. That's, that's really what I'm doing here and I'm drawing out an analogy to help you see how I see a chart, when I sit with a chart and how do I start to look at things. This is kind of something that will, will help. So I'm going to draw a picture of, and I'll have to write his name here because quite frankly my pictures a very, I'm not even going to say two-dimensional, they're one-dimensional. You'll see. Stevie Wonder. Okay, it's all about Stevie today. He is, and before I begin, I want to say that I think he is just one of the most incredible artists on the planet. I have had debates with people actually. Well, I used to, I used to think it was Michael Jackson who was the Mozart of our times, but I'm now beginning to think, you know, maybe it is Stevie Wonder. I'm not sure. It always comes down to those two, doesn't it? But anyway, here's my picture of Stevie Wonder. Can you see that? Doesn't that look exactly like him? Okay, there he is. Now, what are we dealing with? We're going to look at the five powers that we as people in the 3D world have access to. So, uh, I'm going to say seeing. I'm going to use the verbs, I guess. Seeing, hearing. And I'll go for, well, I'll just say taste, touch. Oh, hang on, can't spell. Whoops. Taste, touch, and smell. There we go. Okay. 
Now this is, I know, we're going on a journey here, okay? You're gonna have to stay with me. This is just the beginning. It's strange, but we're going somewhere. So hold on, it will make sense, <laughs> I promise. All right, what have we got here? We've got five powers. There's Stevie Wonder, there's our man. Doesn't he look fantastic? And we've got five powers. Now I haven't said senses, I'm using the word powers quite deliberately. What are they? Seeing, hearing, taste, touch, smell. Okay, these are the powers that we all have access to. Now what if one of these, like seeing, I'm going to debilitate that, debil, as we see in our astrology software. Seeing debilitated, okay? I'm, I'm knocking it out, right? There's one power that's not really accessible to him in the traditional way, okay? It doesn't mean that it's not available, and we're going to go into this. It's just not available to him in the traditional way. Okay, so that's point number one. What happens when you debilitate one power? The other powers become enhanced, right? So his hearing is phenomenal. Imagine what kind of hearing he's got. And of course he does. He's a musician. You need to have exceptional hearing. You've got to hear with precision and accuracy and you know, the beat and everything. There's so much involved in hearing. Taste, touch, smell. I'm sure those are very enhanced as well. I, don't, I haven't read too much into him. I should have probably done some research actually into him before starting this video. But I just wanted to draw out a basic analogy here. I figured I have enough information to do that. So one power is debilitated, the others are enhanced. I, I, some of you have already worked out where I'm going with this, I know. Now, is this totally knocked out? Is this completely, totally gone? No, it's not. When you listen to the lyrics of his music, he, he definitely, and I brought some lyrics up on my screen earlier, Please don't go, you know, look at these. Nobody ever knows, nobody ever sees. I left my soul back there, now I'm too weak. He used the word sees, right? Look at his, um, you are the sunshine of my life. You know, you are the apple of my eye. So he's still talking about eyes. He's still talking about vision. He's still talking about seeing. You know, the, he, it's not like this is totally not present. You know, and, and the mystics always say, you read any Rumi and you read any, any mystic who's, who's really um, fantastic and they'll all talk about you close your eyes and you, know, you, you can see more than, than you've ever seen. So in a similar way, right, when there is a planet in your chart that is debilitated, what happens to the other planets? Do they become enhanced, right? Are they more accessible to you? Um, can you can you do more with them, right? The other the other thing I wanted to say about the Stevie Wonder example is is to say that um, you know just because you might have one power debilitated, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to stop you from having a wonderful life. Okay, so. Just draw Mars on here, debilitated. And I'm going to draw Saturn on here. And I'm going to make, he's going to be dead, right? Because we have dead planets as well. So that's when the, I think it's the last few degrees, when it's an odd number, the first few degrees, when it's an even number, something like that. You can look that one up. I, I might put some information in the description below. But um, how about we have Venus, we're going to have Mercury. We're going to have Jupiter, Sun, Moon, okay, right, so here I, I, I'm de debilitating Mars, Saturn can be dead, but these ones are very healthy and active and doing lots of stuff, right, um, they're healthy, they're active, they're doing stuff, they're in Kendra position, maybe one of these is in Kendra position, I don't know, but the thing is, with the Stevie Wonder example, Right, so let's say, so one of your powers is, um, 
is debilitated. How about we? Oh, why don't we? Why don't we switch this out? Let's have Venus. Let's have Venus. I'm going to put Mars here. Right. So as we saw with the Stevie Wonder example, um, one of his powers is is debilitated. It doesn't mean that he doesn't live an incredibly rich life. Okay, so you've got Venus debilitated. It doesn't mean you're never going to get married. It doesn't mean you're never going to have children. It doesn't mean it's all over, you know. Some people might think that. Some people look at things like that and they think, oh no, this means, you know, doom and gloom and destruction and it's never going to happen. And you look at Stevie Wonder's life, one power is not available to him. And yet he has lived a far richer life than most people ever live. You know, like he's given so much beauty and art to the world. Um, I'm pretty sure he, he definitely got married, didn't he? He had children. There was that, isn't she lovely? That's, that's for his baby girl, I think. Stevie, hang on. Let me bring him up. I really should have done a little bit of homework before. <laughs> um, before coming on here, let's have a look here. I've just been busy. So, yeah, there we go. Well, he's, yes, marriage is, you bet, children, nine children. Um, prolific career. You know, what hasn't he done? right? He has done so much. And people worry if they've got debilitated Venus or something and people worry, oh no, things aren't going to happen for me. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. No, of course, one power might be knocked out, but it doesn't mean that you're not going to do those things. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that like when you look at, say, for example, the life of Stevie Wonder, you can see how there would be so many people so many souls would queue up for that life because it's so magnificent, right? And there would be some souls that wouldn't, okay? Now, if part of your life purpose is um, that you need sight, you wouldn't, right? And the same goes for a chart. The same goes for a chart that has problems in it. Every chart, every single incarnation, every single chart, there are souls lined up who want it, right? They want it. They want to be here. There's not enough room. Earth school is popular right now, okay? So ev every chart is like there's loads of souls that would want it. Some people, they wouldn't want, um, as I say, like if, if a vital power like sight is knocked out, you know, some people wouldn't want um to take that life because vision, say, for example, is vital to their life purpose this time around. So, you know, but there are loads and loads of people that would. You take a look at your chart. It will have problems in there. Every chart does, okay? But you wanted it, and I tell you, there are loads of souls that would love to have it. Okay, and that's why one of the, this, all this thinking has come up because I'm looking at the bad rap of debilitation. A lot of people will just think, oh, debilitation, oh, my life is over, oh, my chart is terrible, oh, it's because of my Mars, I'm not getting a job or this or that or whatever. No, that's not how you read these things. That's how you punish yourself, right, unnecessarily with your own thinking. And I know a lot about that because I had a phone call today with a brilliant friend of mine who, um, you know, she reminded me of a couple of things and, uh, yeah, she, she got my thinking back on track and we all do it. We all self-sabotage. We all, um, you know, use our own thinking against ourselves, okay? And when looking at debilitation, this might be debilitated, this might be dead. They might not be in Kendra positions, so they might not really be players on your chart this time. But equally, sometimes if, it, if it's a malefic that has a severe debilitation or dead or really isn't a player for you, that could be a good thing, depending on where it is and what it's the Lord of and all that kind of thing. That could be amazing because maybe 
you don't have that kind of karma to pay this time round. Um, maybe when it comes to marriage, okay, maybe you will get married, but it won't be the central focus of your life. Perhaps you've come to do some work for the greater good. Perhaps, you know, you've got to be using these and perhaps these are very strong. What if your Mars is debilitated? Does that mean that, you know, you're not going to be very masculine, you're not going to fight for what you believe in, you're not going to achieve, you're not going to do, you're not going to... No, not at all. I've, I know so many men with debilitated um, Mars. I'll talk a little bit about, let's see how we're going for time, 16 minutes, yeah, it's not too bad. All right, so I'll do a little bit, I suppose. Maybe I can do another episode, I'm, I'm not sure. But debilitated Mars, I see this a lot. Sometimes people worry, men worry that, oh... You know, one of my vital powers is um, weak. Well, no, no, not at all. Don't forget, you've got the sun is a very, very masculine uh, planet, Jupiter. Um, you know, if your Mars is is debilitated, and I and I know, I know two or three people very well with debilitated Mars. And they're just, they're gentlemen. They're absolutely, they're sophisticated, charming, um, intelligent people uh, who, you know, they're more the counselor type, they're more the Jupiterian types, um, the wise person type people. Um, again, Venus debilitated. Okay, so let's have some myths around some of the debilitations. Venus debilitated, what are some of the myths there? One of the myths is um, your partner won't be attractive, right? Now, I, in some ways, I, 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 I can see what's being said there. And a, a good example, and I brought him up on my screen, is Prince Charles. And I've got his chart up here now, who has a debilitated Venus. Now, he's a very good example for this topic because, you know, people did used to wonder in the 1980s that Prince Charles is next to the most drop-dead gorgeous woman in the world. And yet he fancies Camilla. What's going on there? People used to kind of wonder about him. What, what, what's, what's that about? And now I do think it is debilitated Venus. Mm. He won't see it. Okay. He, he, attraction will be a different thing for him. You see, it won't have anything to do with what a person looks like. The holder of debilitated Venus is the person who um, falls in love for entirely different reasons other than looks. Looks don't matter to these people. So, and, and I love it as a placement for true love. And we'll, I'll do a video about, I've got a video queued up in my head. Um, I'm going to call it something like the minimums and maximums of love. I think that if we're going to look at that. And the, the holder of uh, debilitated Venus can find a very true love and it won't be based on looks. It, it's, it's a very special, beautiful thing. Um, so that's a, a myth there, or a bad rap that unfortunately debilitated Venus gets. For the person who has it, you genuinely you, you don't mind about what they look like. That's what I've observed with this. Um, it's a wonderful placement. It's a wonderful placement of true love, I do believe. Uh, there are others, but there are other combinations and things like that. Debilitated Mars, okay, um, what have I seen there? As I said, gentlemen, you know, and, and intelligent, and they're more Jupiterian, and they're just lovely, lovely people. Uh, and and uh, the masculinity is not diminished at all. I know someone who, um, yep, debilitated um, Mars, and wow, tough guy. We're talking, you know, um, horse riding, gun toting, all that kind of thing. Very, very macho person as well as being sophisticated. Uh, Mercury. Oh, I love a debilitated Mercury because, um, you know, Einstein had one. Pretty sure. Let me bring him up. I love a debilitated Mercury. I think that's a terrific thing. Where is he? Oh, Einstein. Come on. Mm. Einstein, Albert, yes, debilitated Mercury there, absolutely. 
because I tend to think um, you can you're not restrained by logic okay so look at that I mean you know some people might I've heard I know a client this was a long time ago this was when I was quite uh, I was starting up and I wasn't doing as many readings back then um, I had a client who was very worried that she thought oh my mercury does that make me stupid and I was like no 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 you know no please don't talk like that no not at all you know Einstein had one and and you know, one's ability to bypass logic um, is terrific because imagine what is logic that's the left side of the brain right and when you're more right side of the brain uh, you see the bigger picture you see things that other people don't see and that's just wonderful so that's not, never a problem debilitated Jupiter I have seen sometimes people have some issues um, when Jupiter is debilitated uh, I have seen yeah and, and I'll tell you what moon I'll tell you what these are a little bit challenging I do think so um, a little bit, little bit, sun, moon, little bit, not much. Um, there will be there will be some challenges. Sun. What have I seen with the sun? Some people might think that oh, you know, if your sun's debilitated, does that mean you know I, I won't be wealthy? I won't be. Um, what else are people worried about there? I've seen, I, I know uh, somebody with d debilitated son, very successful, very, very like millionaire, stratosphere, amazing, yes, debilitated son though. Um, I must say his personality was um, not sparkling or, or dazzling. He, he was a, um, he, ha he, yeah, he, was, he was a little bit, uh, not so enthusiastic socially it, it, I did see that um, as a result of that debilitated moon let's take a little quick look at that 22 minutes we've gone okay uh, debilitated moon well wow, it's a big one it can be a tough placement um, it's not without its challenges I haven't covered Saturn at all have I and I do you know Saturn's an interesting one and I've seen weak Saturns and it Weak Saturn can be tough too. I will say that, yeah, this one's a little bit on the tough side as well. Um, I'm jumping around here a bit, sorry. Is Saturn, why is Saturn a bit of a challenge? Well, it can, it can make a person lazy, <laughs> I will say that, um, if you haven't got a strong Saturn. Moon, what's the deal with Moon? That's a tough one. You miss out on mother's nourishment. But you can give it to yourself and you know I think with moon and sun actually I mean these are things that you can with a lot of self-development work um, you can make huge journeys with these two I don't see these two as being too much of a problem I don't see any debilitation as being too much of a problem and it unfairly gets a bad rap the other thing about I think I will this is going to cut out. When it cuts out, I will carry on. I'll we'll put in a fresh thingy and it hasn't cut out yet. 24 minutes. It'll cut out. I'll keep going. I'll let the beep thing happen. What did I want to say with debilitation? Yes. The other things I wanted to mention about debilitation, so it gets a bad rap, but we've also got, we've got to remember as well, um, the potential movement and rise that can come with a debilitation. So if you've got a Nietzsche Bunga Raj Yoga forming, um, Nietzsche Bunga just cancellation of debility. That's Sorry about that guys, the camera got cut as it does at the 24 minute mark. We know what that's about now. Thanks to my awesome viewers who tell me the tech stuff and what's going on. But where was I? I think I was talking about um, Nietzsche Bunga Raj Yoga Nietzsche Bunga cancellation of debility. What are these things? Um, you know, Nietzsche Bunga take the edge off potentially um, cancels the debility. But then there's the fascinating concept of movement, right? Movement. You know, Nietzsche below Bunga, I believe is. I, I should look this up as well. But you know, you get this kind of um, movement. You get this. You're sprung into a new 
stratosphere, you're, you're taken somewhere, you, um, you know, or you're picked up and you're placed somewhere higher. Um, a, a kind of jack in the box, you know, springing or your place, you're picked up, you're lifted, you're all that kind of thing. So that can happen through um, looking at your yogas, right? Your your placements and and seeing, you know, um, seeing how that works. The other thing I wanted to say as well was that debilitation uh, unfairly gets a bad rap because. You know, okay, it might be debilitated in the birth chart, but then it might be, you know, um, somewhere very nice in your D9. Uh, and then, of course, you want to look at all, all the Varga charts. You want to see how a, a planet behaves across all of them. Um, that's really important. And I think the reason that I was going for this analogy with, you know, likening this to looking at um, a, a life where, say, for example, the person is blind or, or something like that, and using the example of Stevie Wonder. I mean, the reason that I I wanted to draw that out um, was just to say that, you know, let's not see debilitation in a bad light, right? Let's not see these things in a bad way. And let's take um, the lives that are very, very deeply challenging, you know, people who, um, you know, they can only breathe through an iron lung, people who are severely d disabled and, and things like that. Now, I have heard um, from very masterful spiritual practitioners and um, people who are very, very good in this field, they say that some of the most challenging and difficult lives are the ones where there are souls queuing up for, the, the, you know, if, if there is some destiny and it's all worked out beforehand. And if you look up Plato's Myth of Ur, um, read that. He talks about um, souls that, you know, you get to choose the life before you come down here. And we all drink at the river of forgetfulness before we incarnate. Um, you can read some of that stuff. It's amazing. And basically, I mean, apparently according to these very profound spiritual teachers that, um, you know, I've, I've been studying, they talk about the fact that very challenging lives, people who are severely disabled and, and things like that, there's a massive queue for those lives. Like everyone on the other side is like, oh, I want that one. Why? Because it's so challenging. I mean, you do a drop of good in that very difficult life. And apparently in the afterlife or, or on the other side, um, you know, it, it has this extraordinary effect kind of like you're flicking a rubber band and yeah okay it's extremely tight but you let go and it flies very far so you know you're in a tight spot down here on earth well you might be clocking up something pretty amazing uh, in an unseen unknown dimension you could be helping one of your um, lives that is currently in the now which could be future or past um, it's extraordinary you know and, and and how does this system of astrology fit in with all of that well guess what I'm learning that myself every day so you know I, I may not have answers to that extent but there are um, amazing people that you can look up who have answers to all these kinds of things and if not answers they have theories and you know what if one of these theories or if one of these stories brings you a little bit of peace in the now come on that's better isn't it than uh, than being depressed that's why I tend to think that's why I like these stories that's why I like all of these theories because I'm always looking for what's bringing me a bit of relief and that's really the training of all of this so when you look at your debilitated chart that has debilitations and dead planets and all these various problems know that you wanted it and know that a whole bunch of other souls would love to have that and that they would love to have the challenge of picking up that map coming down to earth and seeing you know all right what am I going to do how am I going to um, navigate these blockages and these difficult things what, what am I going to do how am I going to alchemize this how am I going to turn up and make good of a tough situation it's really what we're all trying to do isn't it so look guys I think I've taken up enough of your time next time we'll talk about combustion that could be quite a bit of a shorter video I think that's I, I, I think I promised a three-part series for bad rap so this is the second in the series the next one's going to have 
combustion, I think, and if there's something else I want to squeeze in there, if there's something else you want me to cover in that last bad rap um, thing, then, then please just let me know in the comments below. And then I do have a very interesting video that I want to do where I talk about love, and that's going to be very fascinating. We're going to look at the fifth house and the seventh house, and we're going to see the differences between the two. And I'm going to show you uh, some very interesting things. I've already had the ideas drop into my mind on that one, so I'm really excited to record that. Hopefully I get some time this week but honestly it has been an absolute pleasure to spend time with you thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for being part of this channel thank you so much for all of your comments everything motivates me um, to keep going so please you know do the like buttons up or down whatever you believe and uh, thank you thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.